Hey guys, what's going on? It's Coach Fred today, and I'm here going to show you a little bit of a workout tip that, you know, obviously we've been stuck at home, staying indoors, not being able to get out and paddle, so a lot of us have been doing a lot of creative things to try to compensate for the lack of being on the water. One of the workouts I see a lot of is folks doing, you know, which is great. I'm not saying it's not wrong or it's bad, but a lot of them doing getting uh, getting a band and really get, get you know hooking it up to a paddle or a shaft and just cranking through, right? Uh, it's all well and good. The, the bad thing is though for me personally, if I find it is that I feel max tension here at the back end of the stroke or if I was to actually do that pull, right? What that does, it creates, it could potentially create a false narrative in that people feel that they need, that, that they don't feel the max tension here, but in fact, they feel the max tension here when they've got that full stretch of that band. And when they take that to the water, well, that's what I call the crab in a bucket. Meaning now when I'm holding on to here, this is when I'm supposed to take the blade out of the water and that's when the book's supposed to be released, but I'm holding on still. Instead of just, you know, uh, feeling that max tension here and then bringing myself to that tension versus bringing the tension to me. Like we've always told ourselves, bring ourselves to the paddle, not the paddle to you, right? So what can we do then? Not to say that you still can't do that workout because it's still a great workout, but I want to try something different. Now I recommend, again, if you have an old blade and if you um, do stand up and you happen to do, happen to do outrigger as well, this would probably be better to do with an outrigger blade versus a sup blade simply because how, you know, obviously how long a sup blade paddle is. But if you have a dragon boat blade or an outrigger blade, this is a really great exercise. So I recommend maybe finding your first blade um, that you do or a blade that you know that can handle that tension and handle that pressure or find something similar. And again, what you can feel here is that at this point, what I'm feeling is tension against the blade itself, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm instead of trying to pull and crank, I'm gonna work on figuring out how I should set the blade and grab. Right, and that's really 80 to 90 percent of the work right there. And what I'm going to do is, you can see, is I have tension. I have a resistance band, not a very heavy resistance band, some light to medium resistance band. I don't want to put too much tension on that blade. I just want just enough. And what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to have this blade at a little bit of angle. My bottom hand's obviously leading because I feel the tension here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press forward with that top hand, and I'm going to put a frame of reference like you see this ball here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get as far back as I can where I can keep my arms straight. And then I'm going to set. Okay? Set. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be working your hips. You're going to be working your glutes. You're going to be working your core. And you're going to be working your lats all at the same time. Okay? And what you're looking at here is just really good setup. Learning how to grab. Feeling that tension. Feeling this is where you should feel your max tension. And then if you want to, you can just walk back right past it. Right? And you can add that little caveat to the workout, but really this is just to kind of show you a way to just focusing on what is it that you should be feeling for as far as max tension is concerned at the beginning of the stroke or at, at some point at the stroke. Because you really want that max tension to be up front, right? Because that's where we're establishing our stability. That's a representation of your weight that you're picking up and throwing it forward and grabbing it, right? Learning how to set and grab. Set and grab. Set and grab. Set and grab, and really making sure that top hand is out. Notice how my joints are locked. I want you to think about, and I'm able to look over my shoulder. What I'm not doing is this, right? I'm not doing this because that's just an excessive movement. That's that's too much, right? Now I'm working harder than I need to. When all I fact I just need to do is put the blade in the water and establish stability before I incorporate mobility. And again, and what I'm also doing is I'm working my hips. I'm working my lats. And as I come back up, I'm bringing, as I bring my hips forward, I'm squeezing, bringing my belly button into my spine, squeezing my glutes. And really getting my lats engaged as I get my arms out, feeling them stretched out. Okay? Again, it's just an exercise you can do work on, uh, something different, something new. And if you've already been doing it, great. Uh, I find it has huge value on understanding where I should be putting the work and where I should be letting it go, right? And that is the biggest thing when we, as paddlers, that one of the key things that as we, as we progress, figuring out when and where, uh, as far as when to put the power and when to let it go. So if you have any questions, um, please by all means, hit me up. Um, if you find this valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel. 
and uh, stay tuned for more. All right, guys. Have a great weekend and be safe. Cheers.